Jeremy and the Sleeger by Will Reed Chapter 13 A Warning After the show, Jeremy kept his Cinderella dress and wig on. It felt odd that the play was over. It had seemed like the only thing happening in the world for so long. The dress somehow made it feel like it was still going on a bit longer. All the children were hugging and gossiping about what had happened, some of them retelling the story to others with wild exaggerations. The Sleeger, Jeremy was amused to hear, was now bigger than a mountain and had eaten half of the audience. Jeremy had apparently killed it with a bow and arrow to its eye. Amazing how people make stuff up around something which really happened, he thought. Helena came bounding over and Jeremy was pleased to see that she was also still in costume. Wow, Jeremy, that was amazing. Did you know that thing? How did you defeat it? Before he could reply, Kirsty came over too. Hi, her face looked flushed. Listen, I'm sorry about the things I said and stuff. The truth is, I thought you were prettier than me and made a better Cinderella. Tears dropped over her cheeks and she sniffed. The only thing which made me special was that I was prettier than anyone else. That's not true. Well, it's true that you're really pretty, but you're much more than just that. You were brilliant in the play, and you're way cleverer than me in maths, Jeremy said kindly. Kirsty gave him a hug, which was so tight, Jeremy thought that his head might pop off like a cork. Then surprisingly, she kissed his cheek and said, You're a bit cool, Jeremy Deerfield. Jeremy blushed as Kirsty walked away. Reckon she might be an admirer, Jeremy, Helena commented, watching Kirsty leave. Jeremy spotted Mum and Dad at the front of a bunch of parents pushing through the crowd to find their children. Mum pulled him to her, stroking his head. Oh my gosh, my poor boy! What was that thing, Jeremy? It's a long story, he said muffled from somewhere between Mum's boobs. I have all the time you need, she said. Dad stood awkwardly by until he looked like he'd plucked up the words. Jeremy, I was was wrong about you in this play. You were really good, and I don't think I've ever seen courage like it. You've been brave for a while now, and... A tear ran down his nose, quickly wiped away. I've not been there for you. I'm sorry. You can be in any play you want. I'm proud of you, Jeremy. Then, for the first time he could remember, Dad hugged him. Something seemed to have lost a kind of grip over Dad, and Jeremy thought he saw a tiny red gleam in Dad's eye fade away. Jeremy overheard some of the other parents talking to their children, occasionally throwing glances at Jeremy. He could catch a few words like brave and talented, It made him feel funny and a bit proud. I thought the uh, monster scene was overdone, one dad said to another. You could see it was a projection from where I was sitting. That's why I didn't leave my seat. Takes more than that to scare me, (laughs) he chuckled. Aren't you the one they had to coax out of the toilet, the other dad asked. So what happens now, Helena asked. Jeremy thought about it. Well, he finally answered, I guess if Sleegers really are real, I'd better tell everyone about them. I mean, imagine if everyone had one of those things living inside their heads, telling them not to be themselves because they're worried about what others might think or judging other people for just being different. That could really mess someone up or even be dangerous. He stroked some wrinkles in the skirt of his dress and continued, As long as you're not hurting someone else, then I think everyone should be free to be themselves. Helena nodded. I guess we'd better write it all down then. Warn people about the sleeker. Prince Charming stood. My lady? He offered a hand to Cinderella. She graciously took it, rose to her feet, and together they marched into the crowd. (laughs) 